it's all good, I think. So let's see here. Good morning, everybody. We'll be getting started here in a minute. Yep, and we're live. We're uh, we're live, guys. We're gonna just be uh, hanging tight. Looks like there's uh, several of us on here already. Um, we're gonna just hang tight and let everybody get a chance to uh, join this call. Um, uh, I will introduce one more time. Um, we've got the wonderful Nate Moore with me uh, and Scott Stingle. So three of the application team members here. My name is Mike Doe. And once again, we're going to just uh, be doing a demonstration of Design Shop V11. Um, but I want to give everybody a chance to log on. Um, looks like we've got Gabby saying good morning. Edith is saying good morning from sunny California. Edith, I wish I was in sunny California. We didn't get to go to Long Beach this year for the trade shows. And I truly miss being somewhere warm in, in January. So hopefully this COVID stuff gets over with and and next year we can get back to our trade show schedule. So, all right, um, let us know if you're linking in where you're from. Um, also, Morning. if you've already started looking at Design Shop V11, feel free to post questions. Good morning, Margaret. Um, uh, hey, uh, that is probably from Melco Embroidery. That's probably Dan. Dan, thanks for being on with us, buddy. Um, good morning from Chicago. I wonder how cold it is in Chicago. Alex, let us know how cold that is. Um, up in the Windy City, frozen tundra of Kansas. I feel you, Jeremy. It was my home uh, state. Yeah. What? How cold was it on Sunday here? It got down to like 12, 12 degrees below zero or something like some crazy amount. <laughs> Beth, it's cold in Tulsa too. I heard so. Uh, Margaret said she watches every every one of these. There's Rachel. Big shout out to Rachel. All right, and um, let's just give it one more minute, guys, and we will get started. And just to give us a little bit of background, ah, there's one from Colorado. Yay and snowy. <laughs> oh, cool. Getting all kinds of comments. Um, also, comment. If you're excited about the new program that Melco is coming out with, Design Shop V11, that's what this video is going to be on. We're going to try to keep it as condensed and short as possible. But on the other hand, we want to make sure that we share the cool things that Design Shop V11 does as well as answer you guys' questions. So, so much snow here. Alex is uh, from Chicago, if I remember right. So a lot of snow in Chicago. Here in Denver, not so much. Holy cow. Minus 19 in Iowa. Dang. Chris, stay warm. Janet uh, Butterfield, um, nice to see you. Cute little puppy. Wish someone would contact me back about pricing. Um, so if you have not been contacted on that, let us know in the comments and we'll get someone to contact you today. I apologize for that. Um, okay. So let's get the ball rolling here. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. So just a little bit of Bob Ross on there. Uh, once again, my name is Mike Doe. Um, to the left of me, I think that's to the left of me, is uh, Mr. Nate Moore. And to the right yeah. of me is uh, Mr. Scott Stingle. Uh, we're all three part of the Melco applications team. It's been a while since we've seen you. Um, uh, Nate and Scott have been tremendously busy with uh, all of the uh, features and um, new uh, details of Design Shop V11. We're super, super excited about this. So um, on uh, the uh, comments, please comment on what questions you have about Design Shop V11. Uh, one of those, and I just saw it, is um, the pricing uh, for upgrades. Uh, what we need you to do is reach out to your salesperson to get that pricing. Um, Dan, if you wouldn't mind uh, maybe putting up phone number that they can call, the customers can call to get a hold of their sales rep, um, that would be great. And if you're not receiving 
uh, if you have not received a response from the salespeople, I will take it on personally after this video to make sure that each and every one of you get a call back and get that pricing information. Uh, minus 20 in Michigan. Holy smokes. So with, with all that said, once again, any questions you have about the program, um, let us know. Uh, uh, one last thing, uh, and we will hit on that. Uh, we don't call it a knockdown stitch. We call it a primer stitch. That's a great question. If you don't have an, a salesperson, Amanda, we will get somebody to contact you, I promise. So um, let us let us get back to you on that. Um, a couple things. Um, a couple things to start off with is we want you to know this is Design Shop V11, um, and you've got a, a couple things that we want to let you know about. There is a compatibility uh, release for Design Shop V10. Uh, and Dan uh, will uh, put a link uh, for an article. And I apologize for the noise in the background. I've actually got construction going on um, during this video, so I really apologize if you hear a drill in the background. But we have a compatibility version of Design Shop V10 available so that it'll make it so a Design Shop V11 design will open correctly in Design Shop V10. Now with V9 and older design shops, or even back to EDS4, um, the designs, OFM design shop, V11 designs will open as expanded, colorized, expanded data um, in those. And Dan's got a, a really nice uh, write up on that as well on our FAQ. So let's, uh, let's stop me talking and let's cruise over to uh, my buddy, Nate Moore. So I'm going to share his screen Give me one second here, and boom, and let's just put uh, Nate down at the bottom. Oh, that is <laughs> not right. Uh, so, Nate, um, if you wouldn't mind taking us away. So, you guys know me that I love typography. I'm a big type nerd, and we've really, really expanded what Design Shop can do with the kind of new capabilities of open type fonts. And open type fonts, they're OTFs, they're computer fonts, but they have a lot of, of extra information that um, the typographers can put into them. So they may have extra versions of different letters and they may have swirls and swooshes and connected bits um, and, and we can now take advantage of those. So if we choose one, um, this is one that has a lot of extra craziness in it. And let's make it a little bit bigger. Um, as, as we type, we can utilize what they call contextual alternates or contextual ligatures, um, where you see that I have a C here and then I have an H and it has that nice loop on it and then as I type the next letter it may start to change depending on what letters come after or before which is really kind of slick um, and then if you don't like uh, what one is doing so I want to add a little bit of pull offset to make that thick enough one to sew and two to see um, but I can go into the properties and we've also added the character list so that if something does have alternates, so let's say I want to change out, I can click and see what alternates these characters may have. So yeah, I want to go a little bit fancier. I can do that, hit apply, and then I get a much fancier version of this character. And I can do the same thing with the lowercase e so I can get another swoop on that. So we've added a, a lot of functionality with those, those open type fonts, and then the ability to see the extra characters in those open type fonts with that character list. If things are really fancy and crazy, you can always turn it to plain text so it's a little bit easier to read, but even then you get the nice preview of what it is. So that's, that's one of my new favorite things about 11 is just that extra functionality with those those OTFs, which 
you can find in lots of places online. Very cool, Nate. Um, so this opens up uh, just a ton of, uh, uh, you know, abilities to do this. And, and um, you know, if you wouldn't mind, Nate, could you hit on um, some monogram stuff as well? Show us the new monogram tool. Uh, yeah, uh, not with that. Um, well, that didn't work. I need to uh, type a little slower and things would work a little better. So uh, we did add um, some new monograms. Some of them are redos of old ones, but we've uh, fleshed them out so that you can add all the accent marks if you need to. You can see the borders if you want to add them. And so you can select them from the border list. And let me expand this out so you get a little bit more. Um, you can see, is it meant for three letters? Is it meant for two letters? And you can kind of filter those that way so that you have a little bit more visibility as to what you're looking at. Uh, plain text isn't going to do anything for us here. But here's the left version, the center version, and the right version of those pieces. And Sue's cool. chatting in. Sorry, I'm trying to catch two screens at once. <laughs> you stay focused and show us all the cool things. And then after you show us those monograms, could you also show us the um, uh, the uh, uh, custom designs that are the different um, monogram? Oh, the extra borders and whatnot? Yeah, the extra borders. Yep, yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. So uh, let me scroll down so we have a little more room. Um, in the custom shapes, we've added uh, monogram decorations. So if you want to use one of the existing monograms, but you want to add a little bit more of a crazy border or crazy element or more, well, I guess this would be a little more appropriate for the time of year, but you can drag those up there and uh, add these two existing monograms. And they're just drag and drop, which is really nice. Very cool. I, I love that feature because it seems like I was always looking for a different, either I was using a non monogram font and trying to get the, um, you know, the shape, the monogram shape around it. So I love these new custom, uh, custom designs that, uh, that you and Scott worked so hard on. Um, so I really well, love that. And these you can add normal lettering too. I would normally do that on top of it, but um, you can add it to that to create kind of a monogram look with a standard alphabet as well, which I think is pretty slick. Yeah, way cool, way cool. Okay, um, so uh, post some questions. These are just a couple. These are definitely not all the new features and functions of Design Shop V11, but these are just a couple that each one of us um, kind of pulled um, pulled out of the out of the hat that we wanted to be able to chat about. So let me I'm going to take the screen back for a second, and uh, um, as you can see, I'm in my home office here. I would like to share my screen, and just a couple things on on it. Um, one is is I wanted to make sure that everybody knew on. Uh, Melco University, um, there is a Design Shop V11 playlist. Um, so let me try not to click on the screen that I'm looking at with you guys and actually click on the screen that will do something. Um, so we've got uh, Nate uh, worked really, really hard to get all these videos up. And so um, before we actually released Design Shop V11, we had all of the uh, uh, videos done and they're they're awesome. Nate is such a great uh, uh, teacher. Um, so feel free. You can watch these at any time. They're on MelcoUniversity.com under the media tab. Okay. And then uh, another thing that I just want to do a shout out on is 
There is um, some literature um, up on Melco.com. Um, our Melco marketing team just did a wonderful job talking about it. Um, one of the features that I saw a couple comments on was, hey, you know, my, my design shop V10 or V9 um, is not real crisp and I can't make out the icon so because they're super small. Um, the Design Shop V11 actually um, has the ability to uh, work with a 4K or high definition monitor. So um, definitely check that out. There's that, uh, um, the wreath or the, uh, um, you know, the different monogram shields that you can do. And then here in a minute, Scott is going to walk us through a demonstration of the conversion assistant. Um, but there's some real good information in here um, on the different levels. So our levels have changed names. Um, so your salesperson, or if you have a question like, hey, I've got light, and I just want to go to that same level of V11, what would that be called? We can answer those questions on here. That actually would be lettering. Um, so really cool stuff. Check out this page, melco.com, and then just click on Design Shop V11 when you see it. Uh, so let me go over here. So now what I'd like to do is I've got the um, ability to show you guys some uh, additional features. And so I'm going to go into our lettering. So how many of us have done lettering for the first time, right? Um, and maybe even after that, and you're like, okay, I need to have a trim between words. I need to have a trim between every letter. And we have to go down and play with the, the uh, um, the auto trim if greater than. And so now inside of Design Shop V11, um, we can actually take, and I'm on the spot, I've got to make sure I spell embroidery right. Um, <laughs> um, but we've got um, the ability to take and do trims between words and connection types. So I can change this and do trim between letters and but before I do that, let's just apply this so you guys can see it. And hold on one second here. Okay, and there we go. Um, and so you can see that uh, actually right now um, I've already got it set up, but it will actually go in and add those trims between words, trim trims between letters. Um, as well as only when specified. So the only when specified would be um, you're used to using the uh, tie in, tie out, the auto trim. Um, you want that to work, but <clears throat> this is a really cool tool um, to add trims to your lettering. I, I love that feature. Um, and then the other one that I wanted to hit on, and this is probably to me is probably the coolest uh, feature um, this is what's called Design Checker. So, um, and this is available, Design Checker is available in all levels. Um, the uh, trim between letters and trim between words is also um, available from lettering uh, up to professional. So lettering, editor, vector, and professional all have the trim between letters and trim between words. But what this, uh, what this feature does here is if I go down and I click, there's two ways to get the design checker. I can either click on this tab or I can go up here and toggle design checker as well. So I uh, like to do it this way. And what this does is instead of having to sew out designs to find out that there's no tie-ins in the design or um, sew it out and figure out that something is too skinny um, and is going to give you thread breaks or just not give you the quality stitch that you're looking for, um, there is, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, I think it's 13 different um, things that we're looking at, and I will go in and show you that list real quick. Uh, so if I go here and then go to Design Checker, um, here are the 13 fields that Design Checker is looking at for that design. So you may be one that uh, you're doing a lot of 3D embroidery and you don't want the, the system, design checker system, to tell you that the density is too much or too little. Um, you can take and turn some of that off. Um, you can, by default, all these will be on. And what's nice about that is uh, if you click on um, the part of the design that you're like, what is that? It'll actually take you to it 
and we can zoom in on that and see, oh yeah, that's that's uber small and it's going to cause me problems. So I've, I've got the ability to take and make modifications or if there's uh, no tie in it or something like that, I can go in and add uh, the tie in and tie offs. And what's neat is as soon as I address that, so let's just turn those on. As soon as I address that, you'll see that that, um, that caution sign in the design checker went away. So um, you're able to uh, address those things uh, fairly quickly. And, and once again, it, it will save you a lot of hassle of trying to get um, you know, the design right before you sew it or doing a lot of test designs to figure out all the things that are missing. So design checker is available from our free version sizer all the way up to professional. Um, so those are a couple things that uh, are, are definitely uh, big on my hit list of Design Shop V11. Um, so with with that said, what I'd like to do is I'd like to hand it over to um, Scott. So give me one second to switch this over and let's get Scott going. And Scott, you are up, buddy. All right. Everybody can hear me OK. We're good. Yep. Okay, so uh, we have 41 uh, new and redesigned alphabets for version 11. We put a lot of emphasis um, on alphabets because people just use alphabets and monograms, you know, so commonly. Um, so this page here shows you. Hey Scott, hang tight. New I think I think Mike's got my screen up, not yours. Ah. My bad. Oh, my bad. So here we're talking about open types. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I saw the monog I saw the different text up there, and I grabbed the wrong wrong one. I apologize, guys. My bad. My there you bad. go. Cool. Or uh, am I on now? You are now up. I'm sorry, Scott. No, no problem. This is always a fun thing to get all packaged together and everybody communicating and all. So again, we have uh, 41 uh, new and redesigned alphabets for Design Shop version 11. First of all, look at the screen. This is uh, my 27 inch, uh, you know, 4K screen. I've been living the dream since last March, I guess. What a pleasure it is to, to use something with large, crisp icons, bold text. Um, and this is medium icons. So the large icons would probably be good if you're digitizing on a 50 inch TV or something like that. But what a pleasure it is to use this. Um, when you go back to 10, you see how fuzzy things are. And uh, I found a lot of beta testers. They don't want to go back. They just stick with 11 moving forward. So. Hopefully, a lot of people here will be in the same camp. I'm just loving it. Okay, so the alphabets. These are, uh, we've come up with uh, 16 brand new alphabets. And so we have uh, a couple of two color um, alphabets. We've done a lot of work on different block because it's such a popular uh, font, of course. So there is uh, one right here called Helicon, which is very condensed. Um, let's say you have something above a, a shirt pocket and you have to spell a lot. So it uh, has more condensed letters. There's um, basic block. There's two versions of brief block, so a thinner one and a little bit of a bolder one. Um, and Cecil is a really cool font, too. Um, also, we have two brand new puff alphabets and styles that accompany them. So if I zoom in on this, you can see um, we have all the caps in there, like I've talked about in the previous um, Facebook Live and YouTube Live sessions on digitizing and uh, sewing puff. Um, everything is all set up. Full Euro characters on every alphabet. There's 205 um, characters. So in case you need Euro characters for puff, you got it. We also, uh, Nate's redone a bunch of the uh, monograms, which I'll show you, but these are actually new fonts. Um, here's one I did called three letter fill or a three color filigree. Um, we'll go really big and look dynamic. Um, there's also single letter ones and then two different three letter monogram ones. Um, I love this Colorado script. I'm really loving this font. Uh, easy to read, real good for names. Um, on left chest and stuff like that. This is the Coopers is another one that um, you'll see um, in the software. 
um, from the past, but this is completely redone. This is a really cool one right here. So Melody Script is a, a new alphabet, and it also has a second alphabet called Melody Script Flourishes. Um, I don't really have time to go through all this, but um, there are two of them. And basically what I did was you just spell out your, your text, and then you go in and you select, let's say in this case, the M, and then like Nate showed you in the character list, um, you can switch fonts to the Melody Script Flourishes and pick swooshes and crazy stuff at the beginning, at the end of each uh, word. So a heck of a great way to spice everything up for that. All right, then also um, we have redone a lot of the popular fonts um, that our customers have used in the past. Some of these go back to the early 80s. <laughs> and so it was time. And a lot of them didn't have Euro characters and everything. So we've brought all these up to using today's technology and all the um, stitch input tools and just a much better way to do everything. So you're going to get really killer results. Also, Nate and I spent oh, four hours, I think, going through all the design shop defaults and really tweaking them so that you're going to get great results right out of the blocks. You don't have to know how to set up the right underlays and all this kind of stuff. It's just going to be done for you in advance, so much faster. Um, this is a popular one. This is actually a redo, but um, the other one uh, was so old it had a hard time working. So we've redone Bean Block. Um, Sentry is a very popular one that I did forever ago, and so we took a crack at it now and put in all the characters for Euros and whatnot. A bunch of these are going to seem familiar to you. Uh, custom Script. The Curly is a very popular font for uh, kids and stuff like that. All Euro characters are in that. Um, and then a couple of the others. Full block outline is an excellent one, um, as well as we redid full block. So this is a very popular font for uh, sports gear and stuff like that. Um, so we wanted to take a crack at redoing that. Um, also, Park Avenue or Park Ave, as you're used to in the past, um, has been redone. Oriental now has all lowercase letters and everything like that. And you can see some of the new monogram fonts um, that we put in there. All right. The, sorry, these are the redone. I didn't did I go to the new. Yes, I did. Now I've been through both of them. Okay, so many things to cover. Next thing I want to show you is a super cool feature I've been waiting for forever. Um, and we call it lettering compensation. So <clears throat> age old problem like we've covered in uh, past uh, Facebook um, lives and all that kind of stuff is it's very hard when you digitize an alphabet. I mean, I can compensate the letters by cutting off certain ones that are going to push up just through the normal embroidery, but I got to know the size you're going to run it. And so it's been a, a tough thing. We have micro block, which I compensated, but it's really like a quarter inch type alphabet, which is a huge volume of, of what everybody does left chest. Um, but I can't modify the letters perfectly if you're going to move it up to half inch or, or inch or stuff like that. So this is a, a font called the Wesco block, which is very common. And you can see that all the letters are the same height. Like I said, when you digitize them, you kind of have to make them that way. When this sews out, certain letters are going to be taller. So we came out with a new feature. We've changed the um, uh, Compensate, I forget what the original name was. I've been using Design Shop 11 for so long. Uh, pull compensation has been changed to compensation. And right here, you can see we added lettering comp. So when we check it, it's based on a table system. So depending on how wide your columns are, that tells it how many stitches or what distance to cut off. So just a couple of points makes a huge difference. Um, in uh, small letters. So between zero and the 15 point thresholds is where we're going to be um, hanging out with here. Now watch, when I cl click apply, it cuts off the letters that are going to give us problems, but it leaves the E alone because it's not going to push up. So you see some of them, like the T, are a combo. It doesn't cut off the top because it's stitching this way, but it cuts off the bottom to keep it from pushing down. So. Um, 
a lot of testers have been loving this one. You know, they just hit turn it on and sew the quarter inch letters and get much, much better results. It's based on a table system because uh, it sort of depends if you use a ton of pull compensation or pull offset, then you're going to need less. Um, or different fabrics might be um, spongier, uh, shrink more, stuff like that. So it's fully adjustable um, all the way up. I think you're going to love lettering comp. Um, the next thing I'll cover real quick is we completely have redone the um, assistant, conversion assistant. And so here is a, uh, an EPS logo you can see. And nothing is in the right order. I mean, we're not going to stitch the teeny letters first, basically. So um, it's an EPS file. And so we have the uh, conversion assistant wizard right up here. We've redone this. We're giving you a lot more information, telling you what you're putting in. We're making suggestions for you, um, stuff like that. So it's going to look a little familiar, but believe me, it is so redone, it's not funny. Um, this is a, a vector, so we don't have filters, which I'll show you for uh, raster that we have coming up. So in this case, I would decide how many colors. I'll go four. I can let it, um, I can control the order in which it converts the colors. So we'll go uh, the teal and then the green, white, finish with red. This is the overlap of how much it's stretched to account for the shrinkage of colors, uh, layers underneath and stuff like that. And once I redo that, oh yeah, also we have a new feature where we uh, match to uh, your thread chart if you want. So it'll take the, the colors off the, um, the artwork file and match them to thread, depending on what chart you want. So I can click auto convert and you can see that I get really good results. Um, I'll show you this in 3D. There's always a couple of issues to take care of, but it's really, really simple. Um, I can go into, say I needed a trim after here. That's going to fix that. Uh, another one after oil. I can go in here. I need one here. Um, also, I can go in. I mean, there's just always a little bit of work you need to do to tweak it. But if you converted it in five seconds, I think you can spare a few minutes to clean it up. All right. So I can take this and then, say, go into properties and... Uh, Maybe I want to turn up the um, pull offset just a little bit to fatten it up, stuff like that. But you can see if I uh, slow redraw it, it does all the underlay. Just beautiful. It has lock stitches turned on. It adds pull comp. We use auto density, so you're going to get the right amount of density for large versus small. Um, I just love using this thing now. It's amazing the stuff it can pull off. You can see we have all different types of underlay. Pretty cool. Um, and then there's that's, also that's a that's a ahead. pretty intense vector design too for for conversion. That looks great. It is. I mean, like I say, there's always something you have to tweak. Um, like, uh, let's see. Like here, it's a little short on the end. There's always an extra node or something to take care of, and then it snaps right back into shape. So, yeah, really, really cool. There's also um, a step through version of it. There's different ways to convert it. You still can use the uh, up top on the main property toolbar um, to convert. You know, once I select it, this is all back just like it was. I have tons of options though inside of the wizard or the assistant, sorry, um, for controlling like, do I want it to walk to, uh, more often to um, reduce my amount of trims? I can do all that kind of stuff. So let me just um, start her up again right here you can see i have generate travel so it's going to lessen your trims by traveling from place to place um, and not uh, forcing your machine to stop and trim also holes um, filters and stuff like that when to make stuff thicker and whatnot 
uh, when to choose a bean stitch versus a, a single line, um, things like that. And I could go on the step through. Um, I know I'm, I could talk about this stuff forever. Yeah, I'm going I'm to uh, have to cut you off here soon, Scott. I apologize. No, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. It's all good. So, uh, yeah, I should. I know. It's a sickness. I'm sorry. I love embroidery. It, it is. Uh, <laughs> the, the question, one of the questions that came up with what Scott is showing with the uh, um, the, the uh, uh, conversion assistant, am I calling it the right thing? What it, What's the name of this tool? Conversion assistant, yes. That's conversion right. assistant. It's nicknamed the wizard, so the wizard. yeah, sorry. Yeah, so we, we use the wizard sometimes, but the conversion assistant is available at the vector level and professional level is where that's available. Um, we'll be doing some more videos, and Scott, I apologize for jumping in, but I, I just want to keep this going here. Um, a couple more things that I would like to describe to you all, and let me just uh, change my screen back here for a minute. Um, we also have the ability, if, if you upgrade to Design Shop V11, you'll have the ability to also run Design Shop V10 on that same computer. So let me just jump over to my screen um, and let me get it going. Yes, I am using a Mac if anybody has realized that yet, but um, I have my Design Shop V11 uh, running um, and so I can open that um, and so you can see it open. Um, I can also, once uh, this opens, I'll close it and I can also open Design Shop V10. So you're able to run, um, you know, in case you need to go back for some reason to Design Shop V10, um, you have that ability to do just that. Um, most of the times, uh, our competitors in the industry, once you go up to a new version, you're done running um, the previous versions. There's, uh, there's no going back um, in majority of the cases. And... Um, so we wanted to make sure we didn't burn that bridge. Another cool thing is, is I don't know if you guys have noticed this yet, but almost all the new computers, desktops and laptops, don't have DVD drives. Um, so the way that uh, Melco is delivering software moving forward is we'll actually give you a download link to be able to download that software um, and, and be able to activate it um, online. And so instead of waiting for a disk to show up, um, you'll be getting an email as you um, do those upgrades or you purchase Design Shop 11 you'll be getting an email from Melco um, with the information on where to go to get that download, uh, as well as a virtual copy of your product serial number is what we use to activate that software. So super, super cool stuff. Um, I just want to run through real quick I know there's a ton of questions about pricing. Um, guys, we're not trying to be shady about pricing, but there's so many different combinations that can be. We want you to have a chance to talk to your salesperson so that when we talk about pricing, it's pricing that um, is what your package would be um, and appropriate to that. Uh, there was a question, is this a free upgrade? Um, when Melco moves from uh, a version uh, number from like version 10 to version 11, that is a purchasable upgrade. So um, once again, for pricing information, give our salespeople a, a chance. We've, we've been swamped with um, uh, great feedback, um, but they're, they're just crazy busy. Um, we will get you uh, in contact with somebody and get pricing information to you. Um, I, I see that. Hey, Mike. Yep. There is one question that got asked, and I really, you said, do I have anything else to add? And the question was, is the functionality of sending a file from DS to OS the same? Ah, so great question. And, um, and yeah, I wanted to say I forgot, yes and no. I, I forgot to uh, show that cool feature. Um, so I do not have that screen up. Do one of you have the ability to... Um, share that. Note. I don't have my machine running, but I can at least show the icon. Okay, that would be great. So let me get uh, your screen up, Nate. Okay, there we go. So yeah, the, the answer is, can I go file machine load design? Absolutely, if I wanted to, but I now can just hit an icon and do it. Cool. And, and once so, again, just a, just a reminder on that functionality. It's really cool. 
that functionality only works um, for the EMT16X, the EMT16 Plus, the EMT16, XT, XTS, um, so the commercial uh, models of Melco machines, uh, you can use that uh, machine icon or load design uh, to machine. So great answer in that question. Thank you, Nate. Um, let's see here if there's any other questions, and I'm going to just get the three of us put back up on the screen. Um, let's just run through this. Do uh, Nate, do you have any other ones? I know there's I'm, a... I'm trying to run through and I'm not seeing them. Okay, you got the vector stuff. We got the yep. DS to OS. A ton of questions about, um, you know, what the pricing is. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please reach out to your salespeople. Um, give them a little bit of time. I know that, like I talked to one salesperson yesterday and they have returned over 75 calls um, and they still had like 50 to do and they were still working on it. So there's just a, a lot of interest in the product um, and our salespeople, it's just going to take, we released it on Monday, today's Wednesday. Um, so uh, please give us a little bit of time to get back up to you. Um, uh, I'm just looking through here. Um, uh, Brenda Klein, um, I think that's how you say your last name. I apologize if it's not Klein. Brenda asked if there's an upgrade for OS. There is an update for OS. And Dan did a really good job of, of posting that. Um, so there's a compatibility release of Melka OS v11. Um, and all that does is it just gives you the ability to do a file save out and retain the wireframe of the design shop v11 design if you save it out. Now, Bravo and Bernina don't have um, an update because that feature of saving out um, is not something that's available in those, in those two programs. Um, Scott, anything else you, you see? Uh, somebody's just asking, uh, sorry, it's moved up the line. Is professional, uh, Jan is asking, is professional level the same as um, Pro Plus? Yes, it has been renamed. Yep, yeah, so uh, Pro and Pro Plus uh, e uh, in Design Shop version 10 or version 9 equal professional in version 11. So thanks for answering that one, Scott. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to throw this out as well. Um, tomorrow morning, same time at 10 o'clock, uh, Samantha, um, our resident expert on Design Shop Talk, will be um, giving you guys kind of a, a walkthrough of, of her transition from Design Shop 10 into Design Shop V11. Um, Sam uh, has been gracious to be one of our beta testers. Um, and, and, and so I think you'll get from a user standpoint you'll have the ability to see what that transition's like. Um, and and we'll, majority of us here will be um, on answering questions as Sam gives the live demonstration. Um, so with that said, what I'd like to do is, um, I'd like you to continue to post questions either on YouTube or Facebook. Um, and uh, the applications team as well as uh, Dan, oh, and Sam just said hi. Hi, Sam. Um, <laughs> I. I apologize. Her name is Samantha. I have a bad habit of calling her Sam. So hello, Samantha. Um, but uh, keep posting your questions on this stuff. Be patient with our salespeople. Um, if you feel like, you know, you're still not getting a, a call back or answers, um, you can always email us um, or, or post on our, our Facebook page uh, um, messenger, um, those types of things, and we'll get back to you. But I can tell you from, from my side, um, Melco invested over two and a half man years. So it wasn't that we took two and a half years to do this, but invested two and a half man years into this product, um, Design Shop V11. And there's so much that we didn't get a chance, the three of us didn't get a chance to talk about that is so cool in, in this new program that I just hope that you uh, read, ask questions, um, and, and more importantly, share, um, you know, what you really like about Design Shop V11 when you get it and, and watch Nate's videos. They're wonderful. We'll be doing more videos on this uh, until we answer all the questions. So uh, one, one question that uh, was just posted, and I, I want to make sure that we hit on this. We hit on it at the beginning of the session, but um, 
the cool thing about Moco's design shop is a design shop V11 design can be opened um, in older versions of design shop. Um, now, some of those may not be completely editable because we added new functionality or new feature sets or a uh, new stitch engine in some cases. So some of the uh, parts of a design may or may not open in wireframe in those older versions of Design Shop, um, but you can still open the design, you can still see the color of the design, where a lot of folks, once again, in, a, in our, our competitors, you just can't open a new design in older software. You just can't. Um, you know, if you save it as a down rev, you can do that, but you can't do that. So um, just want to make sure I got that question out there or answer out there for that question. Um, Nate, Scott, I really appreciate your time today. And everybody that joined us, thanks for joining. And we'll be talking to you soon. Thanks, everybody. Okay, see you.